everyone and welcome to drones 101 uh, so a lot of you guys have probably been looking at all these drones or multi-rotors which a lot of us like to refer to them as um, but the people have been calling them drones these hobby drones um, people want to try these for different reasons sometimes people want to do some uh, uh, some ph photography some people want to take pictures of buildings uh, for real estate um, some people just are enjoying um, taking videos for events or uh, all sorts of other things or some people just want to get into the racing side of it or some people just want to get small ones to play around in their backyard or even at their house and there's so many different options there's so many different types of drones and there's probably a lot of you that are just wondering where do I start so this video is for you guys uh, we're going to talk a bit, a little bit about these things. First thing you want to know is safety. Safety is very important. Um, these things can actually do some serious damage if you're not careful. Uh, so make sure that you're careful. Uh, you're not flying over crowds of people, like big crowds of people. That's a no-no. You don't fly above 400 feet um, because you could lose it. And there's real aircraft out there, and you don't want to ruin the hobby for anybody else. So please make sure you're paying attention. You're safe. You're keeping all your fingers together, and you're staying, and you're keeping everyone else around you safe. Uh, so first thing we'll talk about is kind of the smaller ones. Uh, most people, when they start out, um, you know, I'll recommend just getting kind of a small little thing like this. Uh, I, mostly your local hobby shop will have something like this. Um, if not, you can find them online at all sorts of different places. Um, Heli Direct is a good place. A Main Hobbies, um, all sorts of different places you can you can go and look and find these. Um, but these are really tiny. These are indoor. They're not going to do very well outside. This is a small, I think it was like 40 bucks. Um, I got it at my local hobby shop um, and it, it's a fun little thing. It teaches you inside. And I think if you're going to get into drones at all, whether you plan on getting into the big ones or whatever, um, first of all, it's, it never hurts to get a simulator, get a simulator like a uh, Phoenix or real flight or something that supports uh, multi-rotor. So you can get kind of a feel for it. Um, but if you don't, want to get a simulator a lot of people will also just get these because these are perfect to uh, tools for like learning inside these things can crash pretty good you can learn how to hover you can learn the sticks because once you move up to the really big ones you do not want to end up you know first time you go out there you fly it you crash it and then it's it's a pain you get uh, you have to pay to fix it you'll really get discouraged quickly so it's important to practice and the cheapest way to do it is either a small one or a simulator so these are great for indoor they're not going to do a lot of damage they even have little prop guards and they're really small they fly they're pretty quick um, but they'll give you a good feeling for how these things uh, do and if you take them outside you might lose them to the wind um, then there's the next size um, this one uh, compared to the first one so this one is another one I got the, at the hobby shop this one's a little bit bigger will do a little better in the wind it's got prop guards as well um, so what it also has actually is this camera on the front um, so having this camera on the front allows for FPV. FPV means first person view. Uh, so with, with first person view with this camera, it also has a transmitter. So it has a live video feed. So it sends the video signal and you can pick it up with something like goggles. Uh, this is a set of Fat Shark goggles. Um, you get these, you put an antenna on it. Uh, this is 5.8 gigahertz frequency. Uh, there's lots of different frequencies that these things operate at. Most of the ones that you get ready to fly are going to, uh, especially from Blade, they're going to bind to a Spectrum uh, receiver or a receiver with a Spectrum module on it. Um, spectrum receiver uh, or transmitter. So that's what that is. That's a Spectrum transmitter. It's a DX7. It's kind of old school. Um, there's all sorts of different Spectrum transmitters that can hold many models. Um, so you do that, you bind one of these small ones, and then this one, as it's flying, you can put these goggles on and basically be in the cockpit while it's flying. It's really cool and it's a lot of fun. It takes a little bit of practice though. So again, if you're gonna do some FPV, get a small one like this to practice, and then you'll probably be better off. These racing drones, um, are actually really cool these ones are made to go fast this one's called the mud skipper and i got it from ready-made rc um, so you can see it's got a camera on it but it kind of points up uh, so when you're going you're going really fast these things are going to be pointing down so the camera's got to kind of point up but when you're like this it's kind of looking at the sky so it takes a little getting used to and learning how to turn with these things so you can turn fast and go forward and go fast it's it's intense it's it's really a lot of fun uh and most people are wearing goggles when they're doing this uh some people um for fpv they can send it to like an ipad or another screen but uh most people doing the racing they do uh the goggles and these things can go so fast they're so cool but again you're getting to a size where these are spinning so fast if this hits your finger or if this hits a person there's going to be blood uh you may lose a finger and if, if you hit another person you know just 
I don't even, you know, don't even put that risk in front of you. Do not fly these around people. And if, if uh, you know, basically if you're gonna do racing, uh, or practicing, just do it in a closed field, a place where it's where it's okay, and a place where there's no people, um, because this can do serious damage to you, people or property. So just re remember that. That's very important. Um, so that's for for racing. If you want to get into that, I recommend get this. Again, you'll want to if you're starting out, get a really small one to learn, and then kind of move up to this one once you kind of get the hang of it, and then you can learn how to how to go really fast. These ones are tricky because uh, when you push the gas, you know, or the throttle, it's like it goes up. But this thing is like trying to keep it from shooting up and just going fast forward is really tricky. So it's a lot of fun. Um, then the next reason a lot of people get into these um, is for aerial photography. So you may have seen a lot of these ones before. This one is called a DJI Phantom. Uh, this is the original one. Uh, there are several ones. They've got the, the three and the four. Uh, basically what it has here is it's got this little thing on the bottom um, that you can put a gimbal on or you can just uh, attach a GoPro camera directly onto it because usually when your GoPro has a certain type of um, case it fits right into here and then you can fly it around and you can either send a live video feed so you can do that or you can just have it set up to take pictures or just record video um, this is kind of generally these go pretty slow you're not going to get really fast you're not going to do any super racing with these things um, they are pretty stable by themselves and again I would still recommend getting one of these or a simulator to learn on before you step into one of these. Um, I also highly recommend whatever you get in this size uh, get prop guards. Prop guards are great, uh, they'll help protect it if you kind of hit a tree the prop guard will hit the tree and if it like runs into a person or something then uh, then you know you're less chance of hurting somebody make sure you're not running into people by the way but if if anything happens prop guards definitely help and they don't really kill the flight characteristics too much so i think definitely worthwhile to get some of those um these things you can also a lot of these now they have many different brands this is the dji phantom but there's like the solo there's the parrot ar drone uh horizon hobby has a lot of different models the blade model um there's the unique which is y-u-n-e-e -E c or k i think i yeah um, but there's so many different ones. Usually you're gonna spend about a grand. Um, the small one, about 40 bucks, you know. The next size up that I had, I think I spent like 150 bucks for this one. Um, and then, you know, if you're gonna do a drone racer, you might end up spending about 500 bucks. Uh, there's other equipment you're gonna need, the transmitter, you're gonna need battery charger. Um, most of these come with LiPo batteries. Uh, some of them come with chargers, some of them do not. Some of them you have to get separate batteries. Mostly the, dra the drone racers, uh, you have to get your own batteries. Um, usually the Phantoms come with their own batteries and this is the first one you can just put regular LiPo batteries in it. Uh, but the newer models, they have their special like keyed type of battery. So you have to buy their specific battery. Um, but the DJI Phantoms seem to be pretty popular right now. One thing that you that you may want to consider if you're doing video, and that's the main reason, is to get a gimbal. Uh, I haven't installed this gimbal yet, but I'm going to. Uh, these can be fairly expensive. You can get some cheap models out of China. It might take a while. Uh, performance may vary. Uh, you might end up spending 300 bucks or even more for a really nice gimbal. Uh, they basically have motors on them and sensors, so that if there's usually when these things are flying they're going like this and going like that and going like this so when you watch the video then like these things are shaking and then the video is all shaking so this basically does a nice smooth counteract to keep the video nice and smooth and stable so if you've seen those aerial videos and they're nice and smooth and beautiful it's probably because they've got a little gimbal on there so if you're going for video that's definitely a good investment and there's some uh, some different gimbals as well that work with the, the radio boards that you can actually control the gimbal and make it make the camera point down and point up so if that's what you're going for aerial photography um, maybe just go for a complete package as well that's another option a lot of these they come with the gimbal and their own camera it may not be a GoPro so you can either go for other options or not it's really up to you what camera you like but the ones that these come with in a full package they're really nice some of the cameras are even capable of 4k video uh, so and like 16 uh, you know megapixel or something for the 
for the picture. So it's it's really, really good uh, photo and good video. Yeah, that's about it for Jones and Multi Rotors. That's 101. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me. Again, a lot of you guys who are really already into this uh, probably didn't learn anything new, but uh, this is for the guys who are, are thinking, hey, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of getting one of these, uh, but I don't know where to start. What are my options? What am I going to do? So yeah, there's the small fun ones. You just play around. You can play in your yard. There's stuff for that are kind of slower for aerial photography. And then there's the drone racers, which are really fast and they're awesome. Um, and feel free free to call them multi-rotors as well. <laughs> um, then there's also really, really, really big professional ones. Like they'll have eight different instead of like four blades, they'll have eight. Some of them will have even 16, like eight, you know, on the top and then motors pointing down. So it's really crazy. Those, once you start getting into that, that's professional quality. Um, they're doing some some really commercial stuff and they're investing like tens of thousands maybe even you know hundreds of thousands of dollars into those machines so that's definitely a bigger step and way beyond the scope of this video um, but if you really enjoy flying things and you want a big challenge what is also really great is just the single rotor RC helicopters uh, that's what got me into this stuff in the first place um, the FPV stuff is fun but look at this I mean they we've got helicopters that are just huge these things are huge this one is called an MD7 but it's a 700 size machine runs blades that are 700 millimeters they fly upside down they're not easy to learn it takes a lot of practice but once you do it's so rewarding it's a great hobby it's a great community of people so I highly encourage giving that a shot uh, if you decide to get into it but make sure you know safety is always your number one priority because these things can be super dangerous I mean these blades are extremely big these are 700 millimeter blades so 700 millimeters swinging 2,000 uh, revolutions per minute these things are dangerous they're like basically knife blades at the end so it's definitely a really cool thing to do uh, but it's it's safety uh, and it gets a little bit more expensive at that point but hey you know what airplanes can be even more expensive and other hobbies like boating or you know floor buying you name it uh, so hopefully you guys learned something here again if you have any questions feel free to ask me uh, in the comments below and we'll see you guys later